Hello everyone, I'm here to talk about the Pisces lunar eclipse tonight and um, I don't have much time today but so I'll try to make this one quick and it's probably better that way because there's just been like tons of information flowing through and what I'm really feeling is that um, this eclipse is really inviting us to come back to our own intuition and to commune with the earth and the cosmos to receive whatever messages we need because Pisces is the great ocean. It's the all. So you could never run out of <laughs> messages, information, symbols, metaphors. Um, yeah, I woke up at like 3 a.m. last night as I usually do these days and, um, I was just getting so many messages and I guess I'll just pull out what is really showing up for me and probably a part of what my um, energetic blueprint is as a soul in this life. And it's really about coming back to nature and coming back to our hearts and our intuition to make decisions in our life. And um, something I've just been noticing is this humongous contrast in humanity of sort of what looks like the organic versus the synthetic and um with the pisces energy i felt a lot of compassion around that and i feel that all of the things that happen happen for a reason and it's all happening to teach us different lessons and when you can look at things that way it helps take a lot of the um judgment out and the emotions out um and it can be really easy with Pisces energy to merge with other people's energy. So that's something else that's been on my radar. I've been brushing up on my energetic clearing and boundary skills and um, trying to kind of stay in my own energy and focus on the tasks at hand in my own life, you know, leaning into that Virgo energy and, uh, my friend Stevie from Farmhouse Moon put it perfectly. She said, I think we all just need to lay in the grass. She's like, I just want to lay in the grass and stare at the clouds. And that's kind of the perfect metaphor for Virgo and Pisces. You know, grounding into the earth and then letting your mind wander and dream. Um, so it feels like a really nice, you know, energy for just being being <laughs> just being and um and you know yeah again I invite you to kind of meditate with the energies and see what wants to come up for you uh one other thing that I'm noticing show up a lot is um a lot of repressed trauma coming up for people and you know childhood wounds and things like that and so this feels like a big turning point and will be um, through 2026 because the nodes will move into the Pisces Virgo axis and I think we're going to see a lot of uh, focus on health and um, and where are we uh, basing our realities on? Are we basing our realities on entertainment and uh, media and movies and all of that? That's all Pisces, right? It's kind of like the illusion, the movie screen. Or are we coming back to earth and basing our reality on what grows in nature? And not to say that it's not all real, but um, coming into these this like Aquarian age, it I think it's important for us to remember the earth and stay connected with it because our health is directly related to the earth's health. And the way that we treat our bodies is the way we're treating the earth and the way that we treat the earth is the way we're treating our bodies. So I'm going to pull one card from my Archangel Fire Oracle deck because I feel like Pisces really holds that potential for connecting with the higher realms. So let's see what Archangel wants to come through for this Pisces lunar eclipse. Wow. Oh, this is so interesting. I've never pulled him before. Sariel. I'm going to have to read about him. This is so interesting for me because I have felt so much of the shadow energy through this eclipse. Um, 
And I'm trying not to judge that too much. I know for me personally, I am a Plutonian type of person. So the invitation there though is to take whatever shadows you're seeing and look for the light and, and try to transmute it, right? So let's see what, wow, Dark Knight of the Soul. Often described as one of the fallen angels and the brother of Lucifer. This is interesting. This came up in my downloads. And brother of the Lucifer, of Lucifer, the light bearer, Sariel is an archangel who can help uncover the hidden blessing within darkness. If you're encountering a dark night of the soul, Sariel brings comfort, helping to offer yourself loving kindness in the depths of your despair. He is a potent ally to call upon when you have nowhere else to turn. Sariel helps us to uncover the triumph within our loss. Like the image of him as an African Dogon priest. This is wild. So many synchronicities. Emerging from the darkness in this card, he lights the path to redemption, reigniting hopefulness. When you have met Sariel and understand enlightenment is not only about light, but the balancing of polarities, you'll have met the, the innermost sanctum of your duality and come into the eye of the storm. If you can master peace within your pain, you have mastered your emotions and you can find yourself at home within any situation. So I'm just feeling like this acceptance, like there's, it's kind of what I was talking about earlier. There's a, um, an acceptance that needs to come forward. And I'm, I'm blown away by this card because I had pulled a card for myself yesterday and it was the Sirius card and the Dogon tribe was very connected to Sirius. So kind of a cool synchronicity that this archangel comes out and the messages are to access the higher mind, which we access through our heart. And it helps us to really hold it all, to hold this whole reality and understand from the bigger picture that we are all held and we're all in this experience to learn. Um, Okay, I'm going to read this message. Although you may feel like you have abandoned hope, abandon yourself not. You are being cracked open to reveal your depths. Treasures await you on the other side of this deep initiation. And um, and I was seeing this too when I meditated with this eclipse. I was taken on this journey through the ocean down into a castle with these jewels. And while I was meditating and I got to these gems and this castle is about to merge with their consciousness. I was about to see what messages they had. And this woodpecker started pecking on my house in real life and took me out of the meditation. And it was kind of this like, okay, now back to reality. Um, back to, you know, earth to Wendy or whatever. So it, you kind of see like the juxtaposition of the balance of, um, of polarities and and when they bring up Lucifer Lucifer was really coming through to me because we know Venus as the light bearer right in Neptune which is rules Pisces is um the higher octave of Venus and it it can be very luciferic which means that it can want to escape and just be in the spiritual realms and really bypass everything that's happening in the physical realm but I think that the invitation for us as our consciousness evolves is to have a foot in both, to have a foot in the human reality and to keep a foot in the higher perspective and to try to find some sort of balance in that. Of course, it's always like this, um, but it's really regulating. It can really help you regulate your nervous system to do both because too much of one or the other kind of puts us out of balance. So thank you, Sariel, for bringing forth those beautiful messages. And I love that the ocean is in the background and the, the lightning, there's some Uranian kind of vibes too. So I hope you guys are doing all right during this uh, Pisces lunar eclipse and just have a lot of compassion for yourself. You know, these energies can be tiring, you know, rest if you need to. And just connect with Mama Earth. All right. Love you guys.